Hello everyone, this is my Festival of the Lost 2022 video, and that's it, so here we go. If you're anything like me, you want to get the title as fast as possible. If you're not, you're probably fine with getting the sniper from the intro quest, which has a pretty good PvP role on it, and you're okay with being done after that. So if you are like me, and you want to zoom zoom to the title, let's go over how to do that. There are three currencies in Festival of the Lost. Candy, pages, and pages, but they're spooky. Candy is only used for buying mystery bags from Ava at the tower. In fact, after you buy three of the epic mystery bags for the challenge, you don't really need to care about candy anymore unless you are going for the title and or gilded title. More on that later. The pages are twofold. Ah! First, you have Spectral Pages. These are earned by completing activities, almost anything in the game, besides Haunted Sectors. You turn these pages into manifested pages in the Holiday Activity, which is Haunted Sectors. In order to get the title, you need to do all of the challenges in the event, with separate Gilded Objectives, which aren't that bad. In fact, getting the title for this event will be much easier than the previous Solstice event. Let's go over each of the challenges and my recommendations. The first four challenges revolve around unlocking lore from the book of the whatever in the tower. I should probably look up what that's actually called. The... From the book of the forgotten in the tower. In total, you will need 194 manifested pages to unlock every chapter, aka every single triumph. My recommendation for this is to not focus your time on this until you have basically everything else completed. You'll be getting a good amount of these while doing other objectives. For example, I have 16 chapters unlocked in a few hours of gameplay without focusing specifically on unlocking pages. Do this in the background. Heads will roll. Defeat headless ones in sectors. This one will be completed over time. Nothing special you need to do here. Local haunts is the same thing. You will eventually get all of these done because of a later challenge. Candy Corner. This is where you need to care about candy as you will need 17,500 candy for it. A Gilded Triumph requires 30,000 candy. Well, how do I farm candy, Dado? I'm glad you asked. In this first week, I have been running Master Difficulty Fallen Saber with two other people, preferably Arc Titans, but if you can speed run it with others, do it. A completion will net you 575 candy, plus the candy you picked up during the run, plus pages, plus, you know, Nightfall goodies. This is what I was doing to farm candy. If later in the event the Nightfall becomes more difficult, or time inefficient, or maybe you're by yourself, speedruns of Lake of Shadows will net you some pages, 235 candy, plus whatever you pick up, and you can do it in a very short amount of time, just skip as much as possible. I'm guessing most of the people in the Lake of Shadows playlist are going to be doing very similar things, so if you see someone zooming ahead in Lake of Shadows, that's why. Mystery Meat, three epic mystery bags from Ava, that's 3,900 candy, that is basically nothing in the grand scheme of the event, pretty easy. The next batch is defeating enemies with specific things, snipers, autos, pulses, and arc energy. You need 100 sniper kills, 300 auto rifle, 500 pulse, and 1,000 arc energy kills. I would highly suggest an arc titan for the arc kills, but every class has some sort of ability spamming build. Titans and Warlocks, yours are both in video form on the channel. Hunters, you're going to want Shinobu's Vow, and then you'll want to stack literally everything that gives you grenade energy. I'm sure there's a lucky raspberry play in there as well. You will get these done over time. No special tricks needed. Although, if you're desperate for kills, Shirochi checkpoints are totally fine. Next is completing activities. Occult Ritual requires 25 ritual activity completions, including Strikes, Crucible, Gambit. Note that running the Master Nightfall for Candy will count for this, so you can kind of double up. Strike the Deck is 8 Vanguard Ops activity completions. I'm honestly not sure how many Catch Crash completions you need, but I'm assuming it's the same percentage. Masked Bandit is Crucible or Gambit completions. I did six Gambit matches in order to try to get some Gambit seasonal challenges done at the same time. Happy Haunting Ground, you are reading that correctly, 35 Haunted Sectors. <sighs> get to grinding. Finally, we have the Gilded Triumphs. The most problematic one for people has been one of many. 
killing all headless ones in a single run of each haunted sector. 10 headless ones will spawn before the boss. Another five of them will spawn during the boss fight, 15 total. You cannot completely Omega nuke the final boss, otherwise you are not gonna get all 15 to spawn. On top of that, you need to tag every single headless one with some damage in order to get credit for this. You must damage every single one. It's not final blows, it's just damage. That is the secret, that's the trick. That's why you're not getting completions of this challenge. You gotta hit every single one. Slow it down. Make sure everyone is tagging every single boss. People are gonna insta-give them, I know. Try to slow it down, or at the very least, pay attention to their spawns. Hit every single one. Masked Mayhem. I got this completed while doing the Master Nightfall candy runs. Deathless One, self-explanatory, don't die, go on a Solar Titan if you're struggling with this, and maybe let your teammates throw those bombs at the boss's shield, because if you're too close, you will blow yourself up. Finally, Sweet Tooth, 30,000 candy, self-explanatory, get to grinding that candy, that's all there is to it, you just need to grind out runs of whatever the fastest thing is for the day. Ask around if you're unsure, this may change day to day. On one day, Nightfall speedruns are gonna be the play. On another day, maybe it's Lake of Shadows. In terms of page farming, the investigation mission checkpoint farm from the Witch Queen campaign is yet again the strat. Bungie did nerf this method with Solstice, so I would not be surprised if they did it again. You do need a friend to do this. It's where you get to the final boss fight of the investigation mission. Someone grabs a checkpoint by switching to another character. They rejoin, you do the fight, you complete the mission, and then you go back to that checkpoint from the first character. If that doesn't get nerfed, then enjoy. If it does, move to checkpoint farming the ghosts campaign mission from the Witch Queen instead. That's the next mission after the investigation. Again, the title is not nearly as bad to get compared to Solstice, not as many challenges to do, and the gilding process is significantly easier. Very attainable to do in a long weekend, but you can pretty easily do this over time as long as you do a little bit each time you play. As for the new sniper, Macabre. Macabre. People have been swearing by the sniper, people are saying it's very good in PvP, and again, the role that you get from just completing the quest is snapshot and opening shot, which is a pretty good role to get for free. This can roll with Swashbuckler, allowing for one-shot body shots in PvP, just keeping in mind that you need a melee kill to get full stacks of Swashbuckler, which is what enables that potential. It can also roll with a Volt Shot, which I don't think is that big of a deal in any way on a sniper nowadays. Uh, maybe there's some meme potential in PvP with it, but snipers are not currently in a spot in PvE where I would really recommend heavy use of them. If you're looking to get something for the future, PvE future, where snipers are good, triple tap, clown, or auto-loading, and then Vorpal Weapon are probably the roles that you want to be looking for. As for my thoughts on the event, I really don't have any. Most of the frustration towards this event seems to be directed towards the monetization of it, as it usually goes. Event pass costing as much as a season for some cosmetics. The merch armor costing 1,500 silver or 6,000 dust per set. It's quite a pretty penny for that. As I've said in my Foreververse video, I'm done talking about the monetization of items in Destiny. Things are not going to change there. They haven't. I wish they did. I wish the mech armor was earnable in-game by doing things during the activity, not spending bright dust. That's not the case. End of story. You're getting some new masks to wear during the event. You're getting a shader. And you're getting a sparrow if you do the challenges. Nice little handful of free items from playing the game. But this is an event to sell things. I don't know what else to tell you. If you don't think people aren't going to spend the equivalent of what it costs to play a season on a sparrow made out of Star Horse's head and neck, I don't know what to tell you. Look at this thing. It's ridiculous. In a good way. In a Fortnite way. But in a good way. As for the event itself, I, I don't have much to say because this event is not really designed for people like myself, and I probably would not be engaging in it if it were not for the title. And as soon as I get the title, I will be done. I don't much care for the sniper. I don't care for another Jurassic Green. I can't earn the armor outside of Bright Dust. It's another checklist event. It's just a little holiday event. It's not supposed to be this grand new season 
type thing. It's just a little Halloween in-game event to sell some microtransactions and an excuse to put on some funny masks. That's all it is. It's not anything crazy. It's not meant to be. It was not going to be completely changed as an event from last year. I would have maybe liked some minor switch-ups, whatever they could have been. I couldn't pinpoint anything. But I wasn't expecting anything significant from this event. And I think if you were, you need to adjust your expectations about holiday events going into the future. Although that philosophy should probably be applied to many things about Destiny in general. It's a little Halloween event. Enjoy it while it's fun. And then when you feel done, you're done. That's all. You know, try not to read into it too much. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Very attainable to do in a long weekend, but you can pretty easily do this over time. Very attainable to do in a long weekend, but you can pretty easily do this over time as long as you do a little bit. God damn it.